Um, if you come a little bit closer, we'll be able to see probably even the buttons on your shirt and your actual pockets. So, you know, so as Mark Whitney was talking about, this is light-based time-of-flight technology, and we're actually able to detect these very, very subtle differences in depth you know, if something is traveling at the speed of light. So really groundbreaking technology, never before available in the living room consumer price points. Um, you know, so this is a, like fantastic for all the technology we run on top of it, but not so human consumable, this particular view. So we switch over to our 1080p, you know, HD color feed. And as you, well, actually, let me back up a second. I'll point out one more thing, which is a field of view, which I think this gentleman over here was asking about. Um, if you could take a couple steps uh, forward, you can show this how close we can actually get to the sensor. And you can see, you know, how far back the sofa actually shows up. And we have an incredibly broad field of view as well. So anywhere you are in the living room, no matter what configuration your living room is in, you're going to be able to take advantage of this great technology. A significant improvement over where we were uh, with Connect V1. And how did you improve it? Uh, you changed the IR, you improved the number of points. Uh, how did you improve that? True. <laughs> I mean, we did everything. We have, we have more pixels, we have more resolution, we have more illumination. Like, it's been a tremendous, you know, both, you know, physical hardware engineering effort and software engineering on top of it to be able to improve it in almost all aspects. So we have, you know, 3x the higher fidelity. We have a tremendously larger field of view. We don't even need the tilt <coughs> motor anymore. You know, on top of that, you know, moving again to the color feed, this is HD color. We have, you know, six times the number of pixels that we had in Connect V1. And as you can see, this is an incredible living room experience. Um, if you want to do a Skype, this is the camera that you're going to want to use. You know, imagine Christmas morning. Everyone's in the view. No more jockeying to get in front of the camera. Everyone's beautifully in focus. You can see the entire room. This is a fairly large room. You know, it's pretty, pretty unstandard. Um, so, you know, beautiful, crisp, HD color feed, fantastic. Uh, as great as this is, it does have one disadvantage, is that it's lighting dependent. So we have some good lighting in this room. I'm going to ask Michelle to actually turn the lights down. So it will be pitch black in here, just as a heads up. So as the lights go down, you can see this color feed's not so useful anymore. Now I'm a hardcore gamer. I watch movies in the dark. I play games in the dark or in very, very low lighting. So when we were thinking about the next generation of Kinect, we wanted to give it the ability to see in the dark. So that's exactly what we did. <laughs> This is our active IR feed. It's a brand new signal feed as part of the eyes of the sensor that we've added for this generation. And even though the room is pitch black, uh, we can completely see in the dark. You can make out you know, huge amounts of detail. There it is. Um, so you know, everyone, even in the back of the play space, we can see you. you know, it's you know, pretty, pretty advanced stuff. I'm going to back up the color again. And I'm going to simulate what really happens in people's houses. You'll have some gamer playing. And it'll have a lamp next to him. Now look at this, you know, asymmetrical lighting. You know, we're not going to be able to recognize who he is, how, how awkward things look. I'm going to go back to our active IR. As I shine the flashlight on him, you can see that we completely subtract out all the ambient light in the room. So we have true lighting independent illumination no matter what's happening in the room. Huge step forward. Can we have a look at the 3D view from here? Is it, can we switch to the 3D view from here? Back to the 3D view? Yeah. And that works just fine. Yeah, yeah. The 3D, you know, as with Connect V1, works completely in the dark, completely lighting independent. But you know, now what we have is the ability to do all of our computer recognition, all our computer vision technologies on top of this completely lighting independent feed. If we can get the lights, Michelle, please. And it, this is infrared, or it is infrared. <coughs> it is infrared. You know, very, very much like what you see on the Discovery Channel. So thank you. You can go ahead and have a seat. I'll get a new volunteer uh, before too long. So, so that really covers the eyes of the sensor. Now I'm going to talk about the ears. So I'm going to play for you. Excuse me, how many IR do you get this inside inside the new Kinect stuff? Are you Just ask, one? Um, you're asking like how many feeds you get? No, uh, how many uh, sensors do you get for IR? Just one? Or yeah, there two? is one IR sensor. Just one. And for ears? And for ears, uh, I'll get to that in a sec. We actually have four microphones in this uh, in this microphone array. Along so the roughly the same than it was in the former one. Yes, we had four in the previous one, and we have four uh, in the next generation one. Much much higher fidelity. They're all frequency matched. If you haven't yet been to the anechoic chamber part of your tour, um, when you're there, you're going to get a really good deep dive on the actual microphone technology itself from my colleague John Link and how we designed that and how we test it. Uh, have a lot of your questions answered over there. Um, what I'm going to talk about is, you know, kind of what we do with that information from the microphones. Um, you know, so a typical environment for a living room, you're watching an action movie, you've got soundtrack, you've got character dialogue, or if you're playing a game, you've got explosions, background music, you've got characters yelling at each other. 
And then, you know, I'll be over on my sofa actually issuing commands that I want my Xbox to hear, much like what you saw in Yusuf's keynote this morning. So what I'm going to play for you is an actual recording from a 5.1 stereo setup in an actual living room um, from one of the microphones in this microphone array. Um, just heads up, it's going to be kind of loud. And listen very carefully, you might hear somebody talking to the Xbox. So now what you're about to hear is the exact same recording after it's been processed by our custom hardware on the Xbox One and our next generation Delta software squad, pipeline. Delta Squad, take cover, order cover on my right. So we've cut through Delta all that game sound, problem. and this is what we use Fox for speech strike. recognition. Target Alpha on my mark. Three, two, one. All right. So that's the eyes and the ears of the sensor, and now I'm going to talk about the brains. And this is really where the full capability of Microsoft at a company level comes together. It's where the software engineers on my team you know, collaborate with top world leading experts in Microsoft research in fields such as computer vision, machine learning, speech recognition, facial recognition, digital signal, audio processing. It all comes together to enable the incredible experiences that I'm about to show you. So for this next part, I'll need another volunteer, someone who's not afraid to move around. All right, come on. <laughs> That's pretty good. You get to come up and volunteer, you make someone else your friend. <laughs> What's your name? I owe you one. What's your name? Kyle. Kyle, Kyle, thanks for coming up. All right, so you're all familiar with skeletal tracking. Welcome to the next generation. So as you can see, as Kyle's moving around, we have you know, a fantastic skeleton. Right away, I'll point out the incredible stability, the incredible fidelity. You see him moving around. We're getting a really accurate representation of what's happening. Uh, you know, he has an articulated <laughs> spine. Uh, you know, he's got accurate shoulders. If you shrug your shoulders, if you move your head, lean forward and backward, you can see we're very accurately representing everything in 3D space in real time. Uh, You're the other the time, huh? <laughs> what was the that? Time, it works. Yeah, so the other thing I'll point out is that we actually have joints that represent tip of hand and tip of thumb. So Kyle, if you hold your hand up and start, you know, waving bye-bye or anything like that, you can actually see as you rotate your thumb, you know, kind of around. We have a pretty good representation of the actual you know, joints in the hand of what's going on. So a huge increase in fidelity over what we had before. You know, we've only got one skeleton up here now, but we actually have the ability to simultaneously track six skeletons all at once. Uh, we'll get to that towards the end. So why do we still need a controller? Well, <laughs> 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 I think further on in your tour, we'll get to that. Um, so this kind of shows how the bones are all connected to each other. Block man represents how they're all oriented. So again, in real time, through the fidelity of our next generation Connect sensor, we're able to detect the actual orientation of this arm. So you can pick up your leg and you can twist it all around. If you make some slight circles with your nose, drawing them in the air, um, you can actually see that your head's representing you know, the actual orientation of your head. So you know, real time, very accurate depiction of what's happening. Um, so kind of moving on from that, you know, I'm pretty tall. My bones only weigh eight pounds. If you really want to describe what's happening with me, you need to get into the muscles and the power and the force of the torque. So that leads into muscle man. So muscle man here, if you could step forward just a step, please. There we go. So muscle man here is a human-based physics model where the colors from green to red represent the actual intensity that he's feeling in his body. So as he shifts his weight from one foot to the next, you can see that the intensity is increasing from one to the other. If Kyle were to jump in the air, you know, you can see he turns completely green, representing the fact that he's not feeling any force on his body at all. You can do a squat, you, you can feel it in your thighs, you can see it on the screen. Now you're kind of really pushing the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> if you go ahead and throw like a little bit of a jab for me. How do you get the information when, uh, for the force and the muscle? Well, we, we, you know, we apply a physics engine and knowledge of the human body combined with a skeleton and the high fidelity depth, okay. and we can compute all this. Um, so you know, as he's taking punches, we're rep representing the, the force <coughs> that he's throwing. So if he throws a little bit harder, we'll get a little bit of a bigger, bigger punch. You don't really put your back into it. It goes full on. <coughs> all right. So I'm going to keep us moving. I think we're about three minutes left. OK, four minutes left. So any great trainer will tell you, if you want to know what's happening with the human body, you have to be able to understand the heart rate as well. So what's happening here is that we're using both our color feed and our active IR feed to visually see his pulse in his face. We can tell if his mouth is open and closed, if he's talking, etc. 
Um, so, so this kind of covers him, but you know, getting back to gaming, you know, people are going to be holding controllers a lot. So I'm going to walk in to the field of view holding the controllers. So you can see I, I've showed up next to next to Kyle. I'm holding controller one and two. You may not have noticed it happened so fast. It actually detects who I am. It says Kareem because you know I'm enrolled on the box. It actually knows who I am. I'm going to hand a controller over to Kyle. You can go ahead and hold it. Act like you're playing. Please don't push any buttons. Um, so you can see who's got what controller. You know what? Hey, let's switch controllers. So you can hand me that one. You watch closely. It knows right away that you know we actually swap controllers. Um, you know.